They used to snicker and laugh behind his back, talk about how angry he would get in the office and come up with other ways to make him snap. They called him Angry Andy, and their laughing would drive his rage to breaking point. One fateful day, they found out that something was different with Andy, but they would never live to tell the story. Andy didn't suffer fools well, he was very easy to wind up. People would make some silly mistakes in the office and it would hurt him on a deep level. How have they been doing this so long and they are still making these mistakes, he would say to himself. He took pride in his work and tried to always make things easier with planning and smart work. His extra effort always got disdain from his co-workers who were jealous of his ingenuity. One day Andy was on the way to work and he was in his morning traffic. Someone had smashed into the back of his car. The other driver had been texting on their phone and Andy had confronted him about it. The man had flat out denied that he was texting and had accused Andy of causing the entire accident. Andy got all the other driver's insurance information and was off to work. He was stepping just a little harder on the gas than he needed to, swearing to himself in his car like a madman. He continued his rage-filled journey to the hellhole that was his office job. Andy had tried various methods to try and contain his rage. Meditation had made him more focused when he was having an outburst, but had not curbed his unrelenting anger. He tried taking time off work, but the stress had followed him on his last holiday, all the way to his exotic destination. This day had started badly and was about to get much worse for everyone. There was a morning meeting that dragged on for way too long. Management had made some changes that would make it more difficult to get business done. Andy had raised the issues with the new strategy and was shot down as just negativity. The problem was he was right, and he knew it. The anger had begun its slow simmer like the tiny bubbles collecting on the sides of the pot when the heat was first switched on. Andy back at his desk was working away while others chatted to each other and distracted themselves from the actual work they had to do. Jerry had come up to Andy's desk and asked him, Hi Andy, can you help me finish this work off? This was after Jerry was standing around chatting for two hours. Andy felt the simmer turn into a boil, the water turning red. Do it yourself, Jerry. You have had time to chat, so you have had time to work, Andy said back quietly. The other employees chuckled when they heard the exchange. Jerry pushed some of Andy's files over, oops, he said like a child. Andy exhaled with a sigh. Pick it up, he said back and scowled. His face was becoming red and his heart was starting to beat faster. You'll pick that up now, Jerry. Jerry had a small grin on his face as he had got away with so much. Playing off as politics was one of his skills. The small smile turned to a sneer as his true face was revealed. He turned and started to walk off toward his desk. The red water became crimson and was now a rolling boil. It threatened to throw the lid off and paint the walls. I said you'll pick that up, you dirty swine, and I don't care who you go run and cry to anymore. Andy raised up slowly out of his cheap office chair. His eyes were locked on Jerry, his chin tucked in, his teeth clenched like a vice. You'll have to answer to Mrs. Wilson, and you know she does whatever I say. Ooh, said one of the mindless drones. The crimson was maroon, the liquid overflowing like a bubbling nightmare. They were laughing without regard and didn't realize their doom. Andy shook in rage. His vision narrowed. He raised up his hands in front of him. There was a horrible pulsing sensation that went through his body. Andy's heart beat with the fury of all the past interactions with this vile creature. His veins ripped forth from his arms and hands like tiny tendrils of a vine, rapidly grabbing onto Jerry's face. There was a high-pitched shrill as Jerry felt the veins pierce his skin and burrow into his flesh. They continued their path, piercing his brain and began to drain his life out of his body. The veins writhed and shook while they sucked all the substance from the corpse. Jerry fell to the ground. He was dead before he hit the floor. Andy felt better. Some of the rage had left him. He heard stirring in the cubicle next to him where some of the offhand comments had come from. The tendrils had found their next host. They were fast and made quick work of the soulless worker leaving a husk behind. Others had tried to get up and leave when Mrs. Wilson came out of her office and shouted, What are you all doing? in her nasal, screechy tone. She was walking over to Andy. You're going to be in big trouble, Andy, she squealed. Andy turned his hands and the veins shot out once again, piercing with renewed force. They moved under the surface of her skin, looking for paths to her wretched brain. 
Blood started to squirt from the holes that were made in the skin. Her eyes rolled back as she lost her grasp on this world. Her face was contorted and stuck between pure fear and disdain. The veins sucked with renewed joy in finding her wretched brain. Why did this keep happening to him? These environments were so terrible and forced the worst out of him. He packed up his desk with calm in his soul and left quietly. He would have to find somewhere else to work again. We hope that scared you a little. Remember to like, subscribe, and check out Creepy Midnight Stories for more.